Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Daily Race C Race and Strategy Guide. We're off to Suzuka International Circuit and ignore the Group 3 up in the top right hand corner. We're actually in the Super Formula cars and to be more precise it's just the SF23 so the SF19s are not eligible for this one. Not the first time I've done this combination albeit the settings were somewhat different last time we did it with the mediums and the soft tyres being available and the tyre wear being a little bit higher. I've always said... Give me the same combos if you want, but if you mix the settings up, you can give the race a very different dynamic. And that is the case with this one to an extent. We've got 12 laps to get round, tyre wear at times 3, fuel at times 2. It's just the racing soft tyres that are available. There is a mandatory pit stop in this one. BOP is on, damage is light. There's a custom slipstream, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in the video. And it's a grid start with a false start check. So... Interesting sense for this one, they've either kind of lucked into giving us a very interesting race here or uh, maybe some thought has gone into this one, which we'll discuss as the video goes on. But with that mandatory pit stop, let's first take a look at the pit stop data. So coming into the pits here in the SF23, be careful as you come out the last corner, you're going to have to give it a little bit of a lift just to make sure you don't cut the triangle, which kind of signifies the white line. So around about 15 seconds to get the car into the box and what we're going to do here is we're going to change the tyres. We're going to see how long it takes to actually make a tyre change because remember it's only a mandatory pit stop, it's not a mandatory pit change. Now if you were eagle-eyed there, you would have seen that it was 4.2 seconds to change the tyres on the car. So what's the difference going to be for not changing the tyres? 1.9 seconds. So your tyre change uh, or your pit loss with a tyre change is going to be 17.5 seconds and your pit loss without the tyre change is going to be 15.2 seconds. So tyre change is 2.3 seconds, you'll save 2.3 seconds by not changing the tyres and fuel is going to be no issue whatsoever in this one. So that's your pit loss pit stop data. Let's move on to the race and see what's going to be the best way to do this and whether there actually is a best way to do it or is there actually a genuine option here when it comes to the strategy. So before you have to consider your strategy, you have to consider the start of the race. As a false start check, now there's different ways of doing it. Some people use the handbrake, I just put my foot in the brake. Michael in front of us gets his uh, start a little bit wrong and gets uh, ghosted. Do be careful though, if you see somebody ghosting in front of you at the start, it's likely by the time you get to them, they will unghost. It can cause a little bit of chaos. Now we made the ultimate sin here of trying to remain on the outside of other cars into turn one from a grid start and we actually did set a qualifying time somewhat by accident to be honest with you I never meant to cross the line but hey I wanted to start at the back and maybe that driver just went hey Wombo usually starts these races at the back let's give him a little bit of a tap and put him to the back of the field five seconds behind Mr Gasly Pierre Gasly fresh from I think he had a pretty good race at Interlagos yesterday. He's jumped straight into some super formula here at Suzuka. And uh, Mr. Gasly is going to feature in this video quite a bit. Now that accident was completely accidental. The driver tried to leave me some room. And uh, it was just that minest of little touches that resulted in me going off the track. So all good. Just what, just what happens, let's be honest, at the beginning of a grid start race. So making up a couple of positions here as drivers make mistakes. Now you always find that at the beginning of the week drivers tend to make mistakes at these kind of combinations. It's a pretty tricky car round to the car. If the inside kind of uh, tyre catches a kerb, the behaviour of the car can be a little bit odd and it can throw the car off. So it's a tricky car to get around the track. So we were catching those three cars ahead of us somewhat rapidly, two seconds before we got to the pit stop. Uh, so I decided, you know what, let's just fly into the pits now and uh, get this pit stop out of the way because our intention here was not to change the tyres. I wanted to get an idea of what sort of tyre life we would have towards the end of the race by not changing the tyres. So pitting here at the end of lap uh, two and uh, we've still got 10 laps to go. Careful of the white line on the exit. Shouldn't really be too many problems with that. It's fairly obvious and you can pretty much just run full throttle into turn one out of the pit stop anyway. So yellow flags are out again as we jump all the way to lap 7, made up some positions from other drivers making their pit stop and uh, we've actually jumped Mr Gasly as well during that phase. So he was 5 seconds in front of us and we've, we've managed to uh, close that gap down and jump them during the pit stop sequence. Now I was pretty sure uh, after you know Gasly came out the pits behind me and managed to stay so close to me through the first sector, I was pretty sure that driver was possibly on 
fresh tyres. So Danny has had an accident there, World Tour driver Danny has uh, been there and allowed us to catch up to them. He's now disappeared off down the road and we have caught up with Licky Nouda here, who is another driver who has uh, had a little bit of an excursion off the track. We've still got Gasly very close behind us. Now this gave me a little bit of a, a chance to check what this custom slipstream was like. So coming out of Spoon Curve onto the back straight. Now I remember last time we did this race, I think the slipstream was on week and the, the slipstream to be honest with you was a bit ridiculous. I actually despised the race in so many ways because every single corner you felt like you had to defend. Now the slipstream is not on real, it is on custom, it still seems pretty strong but maybe not quite as strong as last time. It's not like a formality to overtake another car. Now you don't know what overtake button people are using in these situations as well to be fair but uh, yeah, it didn't feel like the slipstream was quite as overbearing and as powerful as it was last time we did this combination. Using the boost button to get alongside now to here to make the move down into turn one. That's going to take us up into fifth place and Gasly is going to follow me through during turn one there. So we're still going to be under pressure from Gasly behind us. Coming up to the hairpin here on lap 10 and as we come out the hairpin here we're going to see the yellow flags are out again it's Tingle Mania I think it just made their pit stop as well having a good race has uh, obviously hit the throttle a little bit too hard out of the hairpin as I said lots of people making mistakes at this point in the week as you would expect coming out with Spoon Curve we're going to have Danny again in the wars probably not in the wars just actually binned it by the looks of it that's his second uh, spin of the race he's clearly the fastest driver his fastest laps are 136.4 and I've done a 138.2, so he's like massively faster than everybody else. You can even afford to have two spins and uh, still be in contention for a podium. Such is the difference in ability. Yeah, ability and getting, putting a lap down there anyway. Maybe not so much getting the car around the track without binning it. But yeah, coming into the last lap here, we're up into P4. And Gasly is going to go down the outside of us here now. Starting to make use of those fresh tyres. You can see my tyres are not in terrible state, but they are now beyond that kind of 50% wear where you really do start to lose a little bit of performance. Or probably about half second, six temps, maybe seven temps off optimal pace at the moment. And that just means at this point in the race, anybody who's changed their tyres at the midpoint of the race, their tyres are only going to be worn by about maybe 20. 25% so they've got pretty much maximum performance out of the tyres the way the tyre model works at the moment is around about you know the tyres perform pretty solidly pretty much uh, at maximum grip up to about 50% loss and then after that 50% they start to lose a bit of lap time about half a second six times seven times depending on the track and the length of the track of course but you can see we just can't keep up with Gasly now we've also used up all our overtake as well trying to stay ahead of them and Danny is now putting us on pressure on the inside down into spin. I'm trying to squeeze them just to make that line as hard as possible. There's a little tiny bit of contact uh, uh, right rear to uh, front left on our car and he is through into fourth position putting us down into P5. Now we're in the slipstream again you can see I think we're both out of overtake here so you can see the slipstream's not crazy powerful like it was last time and we are going to go for send of the century and look at that we get the cars kind of to the apex, there's no contact whatsoever and we're going to steal that fourth place back. I always say if you're going to go for a send folks, then send it properly and that was a proper send. It wasn't, wasn't half baked where you end up just having a collision with the car in front of you because you just end up halfway alongside them into the turn in phase. We properly outbraked, went for it completely and uh, managed to steal that fourth place back and I was quite pleased with that one as well. Probably wouldn't be too pleased if it was Danny, I wouldn't be too pleased if somebody did that to me from that far back on the last lap but yeah I think we made that move work quite nicely indeed. Let's move on to your strategy options then. So you've got the no tyre change strategy. Now the advantage of this is it gives you the flexibility to make that pit stop any lap you want from lap 1 up till lap 11 and just base that pit stop on what's going on around you in terms of trying to find some clear track now. You also save 2.3 seconds in the pits although anybody that changes tyres will have faster tyres and will be in a better position than you over the last few laps if you happen to find yourself on the same piece of tarmac. Tyre change strategy so you can 
Change tyres during your mandatory stop it will come at the cost of 2.3 seconds. It may cost you a bit of track position over some drivers that don't change the tyres, but you will have a tyre advantage for the last two free laps. And with the slipstream and the dirty air being pretty much negligible, well, the dirty air is negligible, the slipstream is not negligible, you can then make the overtakes. Now, your optimal pit laps are going to be lap 5 to 7. I would say lap 5, to be honest with you. I don't know if I put like lap 5 to 7. I'd say lap 5, and then you're doing a second stint of 7 laps on the tyres when they're cooler and they're, they're going to be, you know, last a little bit longer because of the way the tyres work during the pit stops uh, if you want to get the maximum of the tyre performance. So it's an interesting race folks, I'm not going to lie, it's quite an interesting one, the sort of no tyre, uh, no change strategy and tyre strange strategy are pretty close. I actually think if you gave yourself an optimal run on both of them, you would probably be quicker by changing the tyres. I think you would gain those 2.3 seconds back in the last few laps but it's going to be very close overall and so there's pros and cons to both strategies which is what we like to see as I said either this one's had some thought put into it or they've kind of lucked into a nice strategic race and with the slipstream not being crazy overpowered and my opinion on that may change during the live streams uh, it's it's, it's a good race actually the dirty air means you can the, the lack of the dirty air means you don't have to you don't lose too much grip behind the cars in front of you. You've got some strategy options. You can make use of the fresh tyres. And yeah, overall, quite a nice little race, I think. Thank you for uh, watching the video, folks. Do join me for some live streams over the, the next few days as well. Hopefully the video's been useful in some way, shape or form. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Goodbye now.